gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Anyone listen to any television, newspaper, or other account of the trial or case or conducted any internet research or personal investigation during our evening break? No, sir. All negative responses. Thank you for your patience this morning. We are ready to proceed. I'll ask the state to call this first witness. Okay, I'll ask the state to call Paul Stevens. or title that you had at that time? Uh, they call it an OTR driver. And what does that stand for? Older Road Driver. Okay. Um, and fast forwarding to now, when were you cleared by your doctors to go back to work? About a month and a half ago. Okay. Now, where else, uh, prior to working at Covenant, where else have you worked? Well, I was in between jobs right before Covenant. I was working with a temporary service, uh, doing skilled labor. Okay. Now, was there ever a time in your life, aside from this incident, where you weren't able to work for an extended period of time? Oh, uh, yes. And why was that? Uh, I was incarcerated from 2000 to 2003. Okay. And what was that for? Uh, possession of a controlled substance. Okay. And were you on probation for a point after that as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, now, drawing your attention to October 11th of 2018, <clears throat> were you working for Covenant at that time? October 11th, yes. Yes. And um, is that the day that you get to the Petro truck stop? recall why you stopped at the truck stop that day? Oh, uh, we were taking a reset. Can you explain to the jury what a reset is? A uh, reset is when you have to, uh, after 70 hours you, uh, as a truck driver, in one week, you have to take a 34-hour reset. After you work 70 hours, you have to rest for 34 hours. Now, what happens during a reset? <clears throat> what are you doing? truck or no? Yes, it is. Um, on October 11th, after you said you cleaned up, you got something to eat, do you remember, did you drink at all? No. No? Do you, nor you guys normally drink? No. No. Um, we keep referring to you guys, or both two people. Who were you with at that time? Uh, my co-driver, uh, uh, Chris Teeter. Okay. 
And overall, with Covenant, since you were there in February, about how long or how many miles had you overall driven with Chris Teeter? I want to see we did about 70,000 miles. Okay. Can you explain a little bit about how how often you're on the road as opposed to at home? Explain how that works. Uh, it works like uh, we'll go out for three or four weeks or maybe a month and a half, and then we'll come back home for a week. Okay. Now, um, how did the two of you come to be co-drivers together? Uh, we met at Covenant Transport. Okay. Um, and you had said you had driven about 70,000 miles at, at this point. At come October, you guys had been together for about 70,000 miles, give or take. Yeah. Okay. Now, prior to uh, that stop in Bordentown, how long had you guys been together that most recent trip? Uh, coming off that last home time, it was about... Now, could either you or Christopher Teeter had told Covenant you didn't want to drive together? Yes. Did either of you do that to your knowledge? No. Now, when you're on the road, where do you guys sleep? Where do you live out of? What part of the truck? Uh, the truck had a sleeper compartment in the back with two bunk beds, one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay. And does that basically become your home while you're on the road? Yeah. <clears throat> Is that where all your personal items are? You said you sleep there, change there? Yeah. Um, had you ever been to New Jersey prior to coming to the Bordentown truck stop that you can remember? Ever? Have I been to New Jersey ever? Yeah, with, with Covenant. Let's say with Covenant. Have oh, you ever been Covenant. to... I believe we, we, uh, yeah, I believe we went there before. Okay. Now, can you explain a little bit about the truck stop? What does that Petro truck stop look like? Uh, it wasn't one of your larger uh, truck stops. It was a medium-sized truck stop with the uh, restaurant, the iron skillet inside, um, had showers. To October 12th, did you and Chris Teeter have any real issues between the two of you? No. Um, did any issues arise within those couple days? but it didn't, you said it was an issue, but it didn't, didn't really come up? 
I didn't say anything. Like I said, I gave him the benefit of the doubt a couple times. Because I maybe thought, hey, he just peed in it, left it in the seat. Hey, get rid of it. But he kept doing it, you know. Okay. So let's fast forward now to uh, October 12th um, at the Petro. What would you do that morning? October the 12th? Yes. Uh, I woke that morning alone. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. T, I guess he was inside the store. Okay. Once you wake up, do you go anywhere? Uh, when I wake up, I sit up on the bunk bed, and that's when I uh, recognize, again, he had left a piss bottle. Because when I get up, what my normally is to go take my seat, go sit down and take my seat. So I wake up, it's a piss ball in my seat. Another man is pissed in my seat. So I have an issue and I'm upset at that point. Okay. And uh, did you go anywhere for breakfast? I go in thinking, you know, when I see him, I got an issue with him now. I'm going to have to tell him about it, you know. So I go in and order my breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember where you sat? Uh, I sat in the front by the uh, the cash register. Okay. And uh, did you see Mr. Teeter when you walked in there that morning? No. Okay. Um, did you see him when he was leaving that day? Uh, he came out the back <laughs> of the restaurant while I was sitting there. Okay. And tell me about that. What happened? Okay, when he came out of the back of the restaurant and he approached the cash register, I'm sitting right by the cash register. That's when I sparked a conversation with him about leaving the pee bottle in the seat. Okay. And uh, what did he say? What did he say in response to you? I'm like, hey man, you need to quit leaving pee bottles in the seat. You know, you need to go clean it up. He turns around and tells me, I never called you out in public like that. So now he getting irate or something or getting mad or something. I can't remember verbatim all the negative words that were said. Uh, but we're going back and forth about who's cleaning the truck and uh, he never cleaned the truck. He tell me I never cleaned the truck and I was the only one that ever cleaned the truck. And that's what really got me a little bit more upset. Okay. And so we're going it, back and forth in the restaurant about who's cleaning the truck and stuff like that. Okay. So after you have this back and forth with him, um, what happens next? Does somebody leave? Yeah, he exited out. Okay. And they brought me my food and I ate it. Okay. Um, when he exits out. Do you see which way he goes? No. Okay. About how long do you say you're sitting there eating your breakfast after he leaves? Five, ten minutes. Okay. And then what do you do after you eat? Do you pay? Yeah, I pay. Okay. And then what happens after you pay? So after I pay, I'm going back to the truck, you know, see what's up, you know. And um, I enter the truck, and, you know, it's close quarters, so that's when we, you know, we like face to face. I never touch him, he never touches me. And um, I remember him saying, uh, you know, I ain't got to drive this truck if I ain't want to or something like that. For a second. Do you recall when you get back into the truck? <clears throat> do you recall what he was wearing at that time? I know he had on a jersey. I don't remember. I don't. That's all I remember. Okay. Um, do you remember giving later, back in November, about a month later? Do you remember giving a statement <clears throat> to the police? A month later. When you're in the hospital. Yes. Do you remember? Okay. Um, 
would it help your memory or refresh your recollection if I showed you your statement about what he was wearing that day? Uh, if, sure. if you saw it. Thank you. 